everybody and welcome to our annual Chris Stingle service. It's only going to be a little one, it's going to be a bit different because we are all separated and we're doing it on Zoom. But I've got my friend Pete here to help me do it. Hi there Pete, how are you doing? I'm alright John, Mike, uh, what's with all the funny clothes then? Well, it's only 18 sleeps to Christmas now, so I thought I'd get in the mood for it. You know, so I'm, I'm pretending to be one of the wise men because I am, well, quite wise, you know, you know. Anyway, it's Chris Dingle today, you know, the one with the orange and the candle. Ah, yes, I thought like it was John, like um, I did that on Blue Peter. <laughs> Blue Peter? The old children's television programme where they did craft activities. That's correct, John. Like... Uh... You must be really old to remember that, like, uh, when they showed the children how to make something, they always said, like, oh, here's one I did earlier. So, you made a Chris Dingle earlier. That's right, John. You're following me, and look, 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 here it is. Uh, great, Pete, but there are one or two mistakes, but well done for trying. Ah. One or two mistakes? Oh, you mean like the sweets, John? Oh, I didn't bother putting the sweets on. Oh, I like ate them instead. Ate them instead? Well, actually, Pete, it's a bit more than that. For a start, we don't peel the orange. Don't peel the orange? Like, you mean you eat it, like, without peeling it, John? Oh, it's not for eating, Pete. Uh, and you've got the ribbon wrong and the cocktails, cocktail sticks all wrong. And the ribbon, the ribbon should be red, not green. Oh, John, yeah, like I put the green ribbon on, I thought it looked great. Like, um, got all spots on and things. Oh, okay. I'll tell you how to make one, shall I? All right, Mr. Clever Clogs. Let's see you do something better. Right. Well, to start with, you take your orange and you make a hole in the top. Uh, you could use a pencil or a ballpoint pen to do this. Oh, I've been using some crayons, John. I'll show you later. Uh, right, what a good idea to have, like, things with more than one use. Like, help save the planet, John. Uh, you know. What, uh, thing, things having more than one use helps to save the planet? Oh yeah, John, it's like I oh, use you, yeah, you things more than once all the time. In fact, John, I've got here my bandage that I use all the time. I keep reusing it every time I injure myself. You mean injure yourself doing your extreme sports? Yeah, that's right, John. When you come off your bike or you fall yeah. off hand lining. Yeah, and it gets all bloody, John. Oh, Pete, don't you wash it? No, never wash it, John. Reuse. That's recycle, you know. Well, that's novel, Pete. I've never tried that in my life. Uh, anyway, um, when you've made your hole, wrap the ribbon round the middle of the orange like this. Yep. There it goes. Yep. Uh, and this is uh, a bit of sticky, uh, but you can actually use... Um, cocktail sticks. Okay. Uh, you put a cocktail stick in to stick it and stop it from falling off. Okay. Uh, I've got my cocktail sticks here and I've already put my three sweets on and uh, but your pin, your, your, yours is, it, it's, it looks like you've actually uh, pinned the ribbon on a bit like pinning a tail on a donkey. I see, John. Well, I did use my cocktail sticks to pin the ribbon on the orange, so I nearly got that bit right. Okay. Uh, um, what I'm going to anyway, do now? Anyway, anyway, anyway. Donkeys have great significance in the Bible, you know. John, like... You have mail. Oh dear, John. I've got a, an email message coming. I'll look at it later. Anyway, okay. donkeys... Donkeys have great significance in the Bible, and Mary probably rode to Bethlehem on a donkey, and Jesus probably rode to Jerusalem on Palm Sunday on a donkey, John. Did you know that? Well, I did know that, but uh, you're becoming a real theologian, Pete. That's pretty good. Anyway, I'm just sticking my fruit onto my... Um, I've nearly finished, uh, and 
then when I put the sweets onto the cocktail sticks, I'll put the cocktail sticks through the there we go through the ribbon John. Yeah, through the ribbon. There we go. Brilliant. Looks a bit like a space satellite now, John. Yeah, good one, Pete. You're right. An old fashioned Russian Sputnik. Now then, take the foil, the little bit of foil, and wrap it round the bottom of the candle. Yeah. Yeah, and push it through the hole that you've made. Oh. You have to use a bit of force there. And oh. then, I'm just flatten out the foil because that catches the uh, that catches the, uh, the the candle grease uh, wax when it falls. Uh, so there you go. I see. I put the pointed end of the candle in my orange jar like I was wondering how you were going to light it or how uh, I was going to light it. Yeah. Well, as you can see, what I've done is I've, I've got the whole the orange firmly in a hole and I've flattened the tin foil onto the orange and it helps to catch the wax when the, the candles are light. Ah. A presto then, John. I, I have to admit, that looks a bit better than mine. Now. Can I show off my religious knowledge to you, Johnny Boy? Your religious knowledge, Pete? Go yeah. on, then. I'm, I'm, go on. Well, go. the orange represents the whole wide world, John. Well, that, I'm, Pete, I'm really impressed. Now then, John, don't you get cheeky. I'm the only one allowed to be rude, rude on this show, you know. <laughs> I do, I do like know some things like, like from coming to church. I, in actual fact, listened to Sue doing this last year. Anyway, next, the ribbon is the blood of Jesus that saved the whole world when he died, John, and then rose from the dead. Did you know that? If you actually peel an orange and put it in water, it'll sink. But... If you don't peel it and put it in water, it'll float, John. Well, really, Pete? That, that's, that's genuinely really interesting. Well, think of it like this, John. When we keep the peel on, it's like putting on Jesus, like having Jesus as a life belt that stops us from sinking. Wow! Brilliant, Pete! The orange peel is like Jesus keeping us safe. I never knew that. I'll use that in a sermon sometime and people will think me really wise. See, John, I'm, I might even become a vicar sometime. I've told you that before. Yeah, go on, Pete. What about the sweets and the candle? Well, the sweets are the fruit of the earth. And people used to put dried fruit, raisins, currants, things like that. Uh, and they are for the fruits that God gives us. And the candle, John, is for Jesus, who's the light of the earth. Well, you know, from now on, Pete, I think I shall treat you with a new load of respect. Uh, Sue's going to tell us a story in a moment, so perhaps she could explain how Christingles once were used. Ah, yes, John. I've not told you how I used my crayons, though. Oh, I'm sorry. I completely forgot. Uh, was this a way of using them for something other than colouring so that you could save the planet by being economical? No, John. Coloured in this picture, or in actual fact, I sent the picture to you earlier, John, by email. Right. It's a picture, wait for it, John, it's a picture of a Christingle. Well, I'll have a look at that, Pete. And I, I think that Sue will be able to tell us how we could use pictures of Christingles if we colour them. See you again, Pete. Uh, I feel I've done my reputation a lot of good today, John. Anyway, see you later. Bye. Bye. Well, isn't Pete always interesting? Uh, now, Sue is going to tell us a little story and also explain to us how we'd like you to use Chris Dingle this year. Over to you, Sue. Thank you, John. I'd like to tell everyone a story, and it's about a king and his three sons. They lived in a huge castle in Scotland, and it was at the time when Scotland had kings. And as you know, it is tradition for the eldest son to inherit everything when the king dies. However, the king was very worried because the eldest son was very irresponsible. 
He didn't have a job as such, and he used to party every evening with his friends. The king felt that he would hold lots of parties, soon getting rid of all the money, and perhaps even having to sell the castle which had been in the family for years. So he decided that he would set his three sons a task, and whoever won would inherit everything. He got his three sons together and took them into the great hall of the castle. It was where the king entertained other royalty and had grand balls. It was immense. He told his three sons that each son had to totally fill the grand hall on consecutive Sundays and he would judge who the winner would be. Thinking about this, in the vast grounds of the castle, the first son was kicking up the leaves. He suddenly had a brainwave. I know, he thought. It's autumn. Look at all these leaves. I will fill the hall with leaves. Unfortunately for him, on Sunday, it was a very windy day. He took a wheelbarrow, and as soon as he put the leaves in there, they blew out. And the few that did stay didn't even fill a tenth of the hall. Next, it was the turn of the eldest son. He knew what he was going to do straight away without even thinking about it. He was going to hold a great massive party inviting all his friends and all the villagers as well. They would be so squashed in that they would they'd easily fill the hall. On the night, no one could move. When the king came in, the son went to him and said, There you are, father. I have filled the hall. I have won. The father said, Look at everyone's head. And then look up at the ceiling. Look at all that space that isn't filled. I told you that you had to totally fill the hall. It was the third son's turn the next week, and everybody waited to see what he was going to do. He did nothing all day, and everyone was perplexed. As darkness began to descend, he went into the hall and he placed loads of candles in there, angling them so that when they were lit, every nook and cranny and every crevice was filled with light. The king was very pleased. So, as you light your Christingle candle, remember that Jesus is the light of the world. And if you ask, he will fill your whole life, every nook and every cranny and every crevice, with his wonderful light and his love. And that is one of the reasons that we have Christingles, because in the olden days, when people were very poor and they used to go around begging, people would put their Christingles in their window, and that was a sign for the people outside to, to come in and they, know that they knew that they would be safe and they would get some help. So that's what we'd like you to do, actually. We would like you to put your Christingles in the window light them when it's dark, just as a symbol of the fact that anyone can come to you. And also, of course, you've had a, a colouring in page. We would like you to put those in your windows until Christmas. You know when we, when we did it for the NHS? We would like you to put those Christingle colourings in your window. Thanks, Sue. That was lovely. So we're just going to finish up with a little prayer. And I'd like you to respond by saying... Please shine your light. And so we think about the food, the fruits that uh, fruit of the world that Jesus has given us. And we think about hungry people. Jesus, lots of people are hungry in the world. Please shine your light. And we need protection. Uh, and the, um, the, the uh, orange peel actually gives protection to the world. And Jesus, you protect us. So we pray for your protection, especially from this disease. We say, please shine your light and the blood of Jesus that saves people. And we pray, Lord, that you will save people, again, save people's lives. 
and help me to know you. And we say together, please shine your light. And we think about Jesus, the light of the world, in dark times for people who are feeling sad. And we pray, Lord, that you will actually meet people in their darkness. Please shine your light. And finally, in the Bible, Jesus, God, gives a blessing to his people. And this is the blessing that he gives. And I bless it over you now. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance to you and give you peace. Just two things before you go. Uh, and the first is, look at this. This is Pete's colouring of his Christingle. Uh, and I think it's pretty remarkable, don't you, for a puppet to be able to colour like that. Well done, Pete. Uh, and we'd just like to remind you that we'd love you to colour in your Christingle picture and to put it in your window to show that everybody is welcome here. And here's Pete with his bandage. You remember he said that he reuses his bandage? And this is when he went disorienteering and he fell over, got a black eye and he reckons that he cut his head. Well done, Pete. Uh, we'll believe you. Have a great Advent and we'll see you for the Christmas Nativity on Christmas Eve. Bye, everybody.